She was someone who I trusted, someone who I became comfortable being around. She spoke to me and she said, Alicia, I want to tell you something. And she said, I'm involved in the occult. Alicia Sweeting Miller was 13 years old when she met Lorona, a school teacher who told Alicia she had psychic powers. And she said that I've seen the gift in you. I've seen the gift in you, and that's one of the reasons why I was drawn to you. I was attracted to you, and so I believe that I could help advance this gift. At the time, Alicia was living in Jamaica, where her parents raised her in church. In fact, just months before, she had given her life to Christ. It was really genuine. I was really excited because I knew for a fact that if I had died that time, I was in the right place or right standing. And I just began to spread the good news that I, have, I was now a Christian. I was now serving God. At first, Alicia was wary of Lorona, but there was also something intriguing about her new friend. I began to think that, okay, if she was a witch or if she practiced this thing, maybe she was a good person, maybe she was a good witch. I began to think about all the shows that I was seeing on television. I began to more deny, be in denial as to what she really was. Little by little, she introduced Alicia into the occult, using tarot cards, meeting spirit guides, and summoning spirits. There was one evening I decided I was gonna summon the demon. Suddenly I felt a jerk. And the only thing I remembered after that was walking down the streets in the traffic. A couple of neighbors were there. They were saying all sorts of stuff like, maybe it was drugs and she was on drugs and this thing was driving her out of her mind. As she delved more into the occult, Alicia enjoyed the sense of control she felt it gave her. I wanted to have that recognition. I wanted to be known about becoming one of the world's powerful witch. And I wanted to do what I wanted to do and no one telling me what to do. Alicia moved to the Bahamas to delve deeper into occult practices. She also became an angry and vengeful woman, ready to cast a spell on anyone who crossed her. At the time, I always believed that no one would do me anything and get away with it. I would have to get you back, and it would have to be worse than what you did to me. You know, I had this vengeance in me, and I felt as if though I had to be my own god. By her early 20s, Alicia was a well-known witch, making great money reading fortunes for conventioneers. Then, one evening, Alicia had a visitor. I was coming from Paradise Island. At that night, I did one of the biggest reading of my entire life. I think I read for almost 1,500 persons. And as I was driving over the bridge, it felt as if there was someone else was in the car with me. And I began to look over my shoulders, look in the mirror to make sure that no one else was in the car. And I began to think to myself, wonder if I picked up a spirit that was over there. That night when I got home, I felt as if though I was dumb. I felt like I couldn't talk. And I laid in the bed that night and I could not sleep. But I felt like I could not get up out of the bed to open the door and I could not open my mouth to say, hey, I'm in here. Alicia began to feel pressure on her chest that felt like a heart attack. I began to think to myself, I'm going to die. Only in the movies, when I watch the movies, that someone is going to die, that their entire life begins to flash across their face just like this. And so I began to say, if I die, I don't want to die like this. For the first time since she was 13, Alicia prayed to God. And I said, you know, God, if you spare me, if you give me one more chance, I would serve you. I want to change my life. I want to turn things around. I, I promise you that I would serve you for the rest of my life, and I will tell others about you and about what you did for me. The presence left. Afterwards, Alicia called Lorona to tell her she was through and started reading her Bible and praying daily. One Sunday, she went to church. Uh, the, the message was that Sunday morning was um, starting over again. And as the pastor began to preach that Sunday, I began to cry and it felt as if though I couldn't stop crying and I cried the entire service. And everything was just coming to me, the things that I did, the persons who I may have hurt, maybe physically, maybe mentally, maybe persons who I've shut out of my life, persons who I've hurt, hurt by my words. When Alicia got home, Lorona was waiting for her. She began to say that, you know, what are you doing? You know, these, you know, Christians have you brainwashed. What are you thinking? What are you doing? And then I got so bold and I said, you know what? Get out of my house. I don't want to see you in my house anymore. And I took out the cards, all the rune cards, the tarot cards, the angel cards, all the cards that I had. I just began to take them out one by one and I began to drop them in the fire and I lit them a fire right there. And when the fire was over, I just fall to my knees and I begin to cry out to God. I said, God, this is it. There's no turning back now. You know, I made up in my mind that 100% I'm going all the way. It ends tonight, you know, it's all gone. There's nothing else that I have in my house that represented the occult. There's nothing that I had in my house that represented the kingdom of darkness. I started to surround myself with persons who were more 
you know, into God and persons who are Christians, where they begin to counsel me, to do deliverance sessions with me, and it caused me to grow spiritually. Alicia was recently married and became an ordained minister. She continues to grow in her faith and loves to share her story with others to help them avoid the snare of the occult. God saved me for a reason. Now I'm bold in Christ. I speak boldly for the kingdom of God. You know, he's a God that delivers. He's a God that's set free. He's a forgiven God. He's a loving God. You know, many persons thought that there was no turning around for me. He could do it for you. He could turn it around. He could turn things around. There could be transformation in your life, just as how God has done it for me. He will be able to do it for you.